Welcome back to CBSN. I'm Jamie Ucas. Tributes are pouring in for Nancy Reagan. She died Sunday morning at the age of 94 from congestive heart failure. As the country mourns her loss, those who knew her best have been remembering the former first lady. Joining us on the phone now is Peggy Noonan, a columnist for the Wall Street Journal and a former speechwriter for Ronald Reagan. Peggy, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, I have to point out, you weren't just a speechwriter. You wrote the Challenger Explosion speech that has to be one of the greatest speeches of all time. Um, oh, well, thank you so much. I, first of all, it's very nice to be on to, to, on a day like this to be able to talk about this great lady um, and to remember those, those really interesting and, and, I think, significant days. Yeah, tell us what a lot of people wouldn't know about Nancy. Oh, that's a great question. You know, when you think of Nancy Reagan, I think you think of the great work of her life in her fabulous partnership with Ronald Reagan in the making of an American presidency and in the, the years of the 1980s. And, and, you know, you remember that era and her part in it, and, and there was a lot of fun in that time, a lot of glamour and fun in the Reagan White House. And a lot of big things happened there. A lot got done. I mean, the fall of the wall, et cetera. But I think there were other great parts of her life that are generally not known. One is, or not fully perhaps understood or appreciated, but when the president got sick about 1994 and then he died about 2005, in that just more than a decade, there was the great responsibility joyously carried out by Nancy to take care of and protect this man whose illness was worsening, you know, fairly uh, uh, going on plateaus and then worsening as happens with Alzheimer's. And it was difficult and she was getting older herself and she did it like a perfect, wonderful, loving friend and took care of this American president, who to her was a very precious person in every way. Another That's... thing that I think is not generally known is that in the last uh, 10, 15 years of her life, she worked so valiantly to take care of the Reagan Library, mm -hmm. which was another act of loyalty to her husband, to take care of the Reagan Library and the Reagan Foundation, to go to the meetings, to raise funds, to see that it was fully endowed. And she did this up until very late in her life. I saw her going to, to meetings and dinners and, and get-togethers, fundraising. I saw her walking in on her own, and then a few years later walking in with a cane, and then a few years after that on a walker, and in her last years in a wheelchair. And she worked it so that that foundation, which represented what Ronald Reagan was in the world, would be fully endowed fully successful and last on forever into the future. Well, that's and Peggy. I mean, throughout the day today, so many people describing just what an incredible love story the two of them had. I have talked to others, though, um, you know, who knew, knew both Ronald and Nancy Reagan. And they said one thing that people don't realize about her is just how funny she was. Oh, that's so true. She had a lovely, teasing sense of humor. She was uh, saucy. She did wise cracks. She was wry. Um, she loved. In, in the last ten years, we. I was very lucky and privileged to become a friend. And and boy, she loved the stuff we all love. She loved fun and conversation and good gossip. You know, she was uh, in some ways a real girl's girl in, in terms of talking about the the wonderful foibles and interesting lives of others. She took a lot of joy in, in social events and in get-togethers. She was very warm, and she treated everybody the same. She wasn't fancy with some people and not so fancy with others. She was the same for everybody. You know, we've talked to other staffers today, too, who said she was tough, though, that, you know, she was so protective of the president that she would go out of her way sometimes to talk to a staffer that she didn't think... Uh, in particular, was maybe helpful to the president. Did you ever witness things like that, being a speechwriter for, for Ronald? I, I don't remember witnessing that, 
but I would say that that observation is completely correct. You know, of the two of them, they were such an enduring partnership and a close friendship, and they loved each other, but he wasn't a worrier. So she sort of became the unofficial vice president for worrying. <laughs> and he was never protective with himself. If anybody wanted to talk to him or needed him or wanted to grab him, he was fine. But she was the one who'd say, wait a second, he needs a little rest right now. It's 11.45 p.m. Leave him alone. Or he's thinking now on the plane. Let him think and take his notes. Don't be in his face. So I, she was a very strong protective barrier uh, for him, and she made it possible for him to be him because she was protective. You know, she did get some criticism for that later on in his presidency where it appeared that she was feeding him a line. Um, when you witnessed things like that, did you think it was a loving relationship, or were there indications that potentially he could be suffering the very early stages of Alzheimer's even back while he was oh, president? Oh, no. No, no, no. He was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, I think, in, in 1994. He left the White House in uh, 1989. No, there was nothing like that. I remember the famous videotape of President Reagan, you know, gesturing towards some reporters, who were behind the reporter line and, and sort of uh, saying hello to them. Somebody yelled a question, and he couldn't hear it. The reason he couldn't hear it was he didn't have good hearing, mm. and Nancy knew it. And so sometimes she would repeat questions to him. But, but that wasn't some Machiavellian, you know, Kevin Spacey <laughs> house of no, cards just, thing. <laughs> that was a it was wife the helping of the relationship. her husband. Right. Yeah, that, yeah, that was a wife helping a husband. It's um, it, it had to be a fascinating time uh, to be within the White House, because even very early on, uh, you know, a number of feminists thought, oh, here we go. Nancy Reagan, you know, she's Hollywood. Uh, she's coming in and she's just gazing at her husband. Um, and then she ended up taking on some real issues. Can you talk about kind of the changes you saw within her uh, through the years in the White House? Well, I always thought the feminist criticism of Nancy Reagan was a bunch of malarkey. Um, this was a working woman. You know, she had been an ambitious actress in Hollywood. She hit her marks. She tried very hard to have a career, and she worked very hard when she got a part. So this was a working woman who I think deserved uh, some respect for that, um, and and she was also somebody with a family and somebody with a husband. She had a very full and, in my view, very rounded life. I always thought feminists were kind of nasty about her because she was a Republican and a conservative and they're the enemy, you know? So, so I think that's a little bit of, of what drove them. But she was very interested in many issues and often discussed them with her husband. She had a um, part of her protectiveness, I think, was in figuring out who working around the president may not have been doing such a good job. And she was not shy to let him know who she thought it was. So that was part of it. Peggy Noonan, thank you so very much for your insight um, and, and for being with us on a day. I know it's, it's been tough for a lot of people who were close uh, with both Nancy and Ronald Reagan. So thank you. you. We're all sad about it. You know, she was a great one. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jamie.